Okay, so I'm just going to be incredibly blunt when it comes to the world building surrounding this movie and the multiverse in general. The MCU and those in charge of it have no idea what they're doing, especially when it comes to movies that focus on the multiverse. You'd think that after having five years to focus on it, they would make the rules a little more consistent, but now Deadpool and Wolverine has come along to thoroughly fuck things up a little bit more. Now a lot of what I'm about to talk about I've already talked about last year in my Ant-Man Quantumania video, so anyone that's seen that video I apologise if it sounds like I'm repeating myself a little bit. But with the addition of Loki Season 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine, I think it's time I updated all the different contradicting rules and concepts introduced to the MCU so far. So in Loki, it's established that the different Kangs from across the the multiverse kept interacting with each other, and eventually started to try and conquer each universe. Then He Who Remains went back in time and started to prune any timelines that would lead to other timelines that wouldn't make him. Now he has to eliminate these new timelines, because otherwise these new timelines can spawn an infinite amount of other new timelines, essentially restarting the multiverse and creating the multiversal war again. So this show established that one, other individuals can cross over between other universes and affect their universes without any problems on a fundamental level. 2. When there's a change, the change needs to be pruned as soon as possible, in less than 24 hours at most, because if not a whole bunch of other universes and Kangs will come into existence. 3. He who remains is pruning all universes that aren't his, as any other universe that can exist can also create other timelines that could lead to another Kang, or at least a being as strong as Kang. So during this show we see multiple different versions of Loki, and some of these make sense. We have classic Loki, who faked his death at the hands of Thanos and then was pruned for trying to leave his exile. And we have Kid Loki, whose timeline was pruned for killing Thor. Then we have boastful Loki, Sylvie and Kroki. Now, these Lokis should have been pruned as soon as they were born for very obvious reasons. The fact that these Lokis don't look anything like the mainstream Loki should have gotten them pruned immediately. For he who remains to be born, Loki needs to be a white male humanoid. He needs to look like Tom Hiddleston's Loki from the Sacred Timeline. Otherwise, other universes and timelines would therefore exist. And if these timelines and universes exist, they also run the risk of creating another Kang, or a being like him, and that would destroy he who remains his entire plan. The fact that these variants exist and were allowed to fully grow make no sense in terms of what He Who Remains is trying to accomplish. Anyways, by the end of the series they kill He Who Remains and gets the multiverse restarted from this point on. This means that in the mainline MCU, the multiverse should only be changing things from this point on, as people cannot travel back in time in their own timeline, and everything from the start of time up until Avengers Endgame was protected by He Who Remains. Then we have What If, and its interpretation of the multiverse. This show too emphasises that people can come and go into other universes without any risks, as many main characters join up and fight alongside each other, and in the end a Black Widow is deployed by the Watcher in another universe. Unfortunately this show also sets up that the the Watcher is part of a system that not only answers to a higher power that is interested in the multiverse and creation, but the Watcher is also dedicated to the protection of the multiverse itself, showing himself being willing to step in when the threat of the multiverse getting destroyed is apparent. Except he who remains essentially destroyed the multiverse to ensure that his existence wasn't ended by another Kang, which brings in the big question of why the Watcher, a being who shows that ultimately he cares more about helping people over his vow of not interfering, chose not to stop Kang as he destroyed the entire multiverse and killed trillions upon trillions of sentient beings. So at this point you've not only got one show that contradicts and interferes with its own logic, you've now got two different shows that make two different points of view that cannot collaborate with each other and still make sense. Then we had No Way Home, which doesn't add a lot in terms of the rules of the multiverse. All we see is that different individuals can come and go between different universes and interact with it without any consequences. Buildings can get destroyed, they can be broadcasted all over the news and they can kill people, and there's no effect on the universe. They're just an aspect of that timeline now and that's it. The only reason why the universe is under threat is because of the misuse of a magic spell, not because of the fundamental aspects of the universe. It seems to line up with what's been established in both Loki and What If. And then we had Multiverse of Madness, which proceeded to take everything that was established in the previous bits of media and smash it to pieces with a hammer. In this film, the only thing that's consistent with the previous examples is that magic can be used to reach different universes, with the ability to dreamwalk into other universes. For everything else, this movie introduces that 1. When you have a dream, you're actually looking into another universe. And 2. When you go into another universe, you run the risk of an incursion happening. This can lead to one or both of the universes 
getting destroyed, meaning that if you stay in the universe for too long or interfere with it too much, it'll cause an incursion. So this movie just destroys everything we've learned from the ground up. Does this mean that dreams didn't exist before this film? It's established that America Chavez doesn't have dreams because she's the only one of her that exists in the multiverse. So are you seriously saying that before Endgame, no one in the history of mankind was able to dream? At the end of the film, Doctor Strange seems optimistic that America Chavez will be able to find her mothers, except this was over a decade ago. Surely an incursion would have happened that destroyed the universe they're in by now. And Doctor Strange already knows how incursions work, so why would he tell her this? And the scene doesn't frame him as lying about it here, he seems genuinely sincere. Also, why is he letting America stay in this universe when she isn't from here? He's just knowingly letting an incursion grow against the main timeline and he just doesn't care to protect it? How did Kang manage to meet themselves, improve their universes and conquer each other when that would have just led to them getting destroyed by incursions immediately, considering how much they would be altering the fabric of their universes? America Chavez met Defender Strange and has known him for long enough to be deeply hurt when he betrays her, but that doesn't really make sense because surely by this point the universe would have been destroyed if she knew him this long. We see different characters from different universes and points in time come into the MCU and affect the world, causing chaos and killing people, needing Strange to do a spell that would affect the entire multiverse to save the day. But the events of this movie didn't cause an incursion? We have an alternate universe Gamora running around in the main timeline, and Steve managed to stay for several decades in an alternate universe. Except using these rules, that doesn't make any sense, because simply being in another universe for a few hours is enough of a threat that the Illuminati seriously considered killing Doctor Strange. But if a few hours could be devastating, then how did Steve manage to stay for several decades? The main timeline has progressed by several years since Endgame, but this alternate Gamora is still here. So how does this make any sense? And it can't be because of he who remains keeping the timeline intact. Because as soon as we see this Loki teleport away, the entire Loki series happens due to the non-linear time structure of how the show operates on. Which means that by the time the Avengers crew finished their time heist, he who remains should have been dead. The Watcher is also a complete idiot because despite being a highly powerful galactic being, he seemingly doesn't understand the rules around his own job. The risk of incursion would lead to the death of two universes, something the Watcher doesn't want to happen because at the end of the first season he values life over his own oath, yet he deliberately leaves an alternate version of Black Widow in a different universe, which would lead to an incursion happening. And then we had Ant-Man and the Wasp, Prontomania. So Janet Van Dyne was trapped in a quantum realm for several decades, and as this was set before Endgame and Loki, the multiverse wouldn't have existed before then, which means the only version of Kang that would have existed would have been He Who Remains, who is currently at the end of the MCU universe's timeline. There also wouldn't be anyone else in the quantum realm besides her, as all the other universes would have been destroyed and no one would be able to travel here. And before people start bringing up Loki and the non-linear time structure that it operates on, everything that happened before that show still needs to happen as it happened. The Loki TV show exists because of everything leading up to it. If you're going to say that because of the non-linear time aspect of the series that the multiverse just always existed, then that doesn't make any sense because if the multiverse always existed, then Loki wouldn't have got taken away by the TVA. In order for this show to happen, the multiverse cannot exist before Avengers Endgame, only after it. Which means it makes absolutely no sense that in Ant-Man and the Wasp Pontomania, Janet establishes that not only is there an entire city in the quantum realm made up of other individuals who have travelled from other universes, but she has met a version of Kang here and she knows that he has abilities that will let him alter and destroy timelines and universes. And before you say he might have just been one that slipped away during the war, he who remains has shown to be completely in control of the multiverse and the different aspects off it, and he knows about the quantum realm because he allowed the Avengers to do their time heist through there. We're not here to talk about the Avengers. Oh no? No. What they did was supposed to happen. So there should be absolutely no reason as to why there would be a surviving Kang from the multiversal war here because he who remains would have eliminated him to stop any damage to his timeline. So now not only has this film managed to completely contradict Loki and everything established in that show, it's now gone out of its way to retcon previously established lore in the MCU. Not only have they just taken a Kang and randomly inserted him in here, if this Kang was such a threat, don't you think Janet's main priority would be to warn everyone as soon as she gets out? 
But no, we've already seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, and we know that she does really seem to be that scared or worried about the possibility of Kang conquering her home and killing the people she cares about. Loki Season 2 then came along and decided to add even more timey-wimey bullshit to the equation. Apparently there's a thing called a temporal loom, which is a device that turns time into timelines and energy, which helps to power the TVA and keep the sacred timeline going. It also has a hidden failsafe that would cause it to overload if he who remains dies, and the sacred timeline would start branching off too much. Now, considering how much they're against pruning, you'd think the heroes would just turn it off, right? Well, apparently they can't do this, because if they do this, the multiverse will basically unravel and die, which is such a fucking stupid concept. The loom is an artificial thing, inserted in there by Kang. The multiverse didn't need it to function before. So why would turning it off now destroy the multiverse? Anyways, throughout the season, Loki basically just pulls some cosmic bullshit powers out of his ass and becomes a cosmic being, becoming a new loom and keeping the multiverse intact. None of it makes any sense, and this entire concept of a loom was just created to try and justify another season of this shitty TV show. And now we can move on to Deadpool and Wolverine. Apparently, there is now a thing called Anchor Being, which somehow makes things even worse for the multiverse and its rules. These people are apparently the most important entity in existence in that universe and the universe will die if that being is killed. In this case, because Logan died, Wade's timeline has also started to die, and so he has to try and find a way to stop it. There's a lot of issues with this, but first let me dismantle the most popular shitty argument that tries to defend this concept. But Lumar, the anchor being is just a reference to the fact that in the Fox universe, Wolverine was the most important and beloved person in that franchise, and with him gone, the universe started to decline. This whole movie is just a big reference to that. Come here. Come right next to whatever device you're listening to this on, your TV, laptop, your phone, just whatever. Just put your ear right next to this device and listen to me. I don't fucking care. You don't need to create a $200 million movie to remind people that Wolverine is a popular character. You can fuck right off with your meta-narrative bullshit. This is a movie with a plot and rules and world building that has to go along with the rest of the MCU. It's okay because none of it makes sense and it fucks with the rest of the MCU because the movie isn't supposed to make sense from a narrative perspective isn't a valid excuse. Now, onto the issues. For a start, this doesn't make any sense for this timeline anyways. Logan doesn't take place in either of these timelines. It doesn't take place in the original timeline, in the rebooted timeline, or the, ambi or the ambiguous timeline Deadpool is set in. It's in its own separate timeline that has nothing to do with any of these. So, Logan dying shouldn't be affecting Deadpool's universe. But secondly, how does a character dying in the future lead to the universe dying in the past? Logan is set in 2029. Meanwhile, the Deadpool movies are set much earlier. So how do the events of Logan have any effect on Deadpool and Wolverine? If that is the case, shouldn't the universe start to die since the very start of the universe's beginning? It just doesn't make any sense. Literally every universe in existence should just die because at some point their anchor being is also going to die, which will affect the past. So yeah, the multiverse should just be dead. Thirdly, how exactly does being an anchor being work? Is it something you're born with? Or is it just a random arbitrary cosmic concept that can be applied to any being that fits the basic criteria for that universe? If it's a concept, then how is that concept created? who's in charge of assigning this concept to a new being when it comes into the universe. If it's signed to a specific being, and only that being, does that mean that Wolverine left his entire universe to die? If he is born an anchor being, and he is now in Wade's universe keeping it alive, then did he just abandon everything in his universe to die? I know he doesn't want to be there anymore, but that's still an entire universe full of people left to die, and the movie just brushes right over this. Overall, I've got no idea what the MCU is doing, I thought Deadpool 3 would be quite a fun experience, and to be honest, everything surrounding the main plot is. But the main plot and concept itself is just terrible. The multiverse ideas that they've been forcing into their media since Phase 4 just doesn't work on any fundamental level. And it's very clear to see that Kevin Feige, the writers and the directors don't have a clue about what they're doing with it. Thanks for watching lads and lasses, if you enjoyed this video please consider liking, subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. Sharing always helps and if you're feeling really generous please consider my Patreon or YouTube membership. I also have a Twitter and occasionally I do live streams. But most of all I just hope you had a great day and hopefully I will see you in the next video.